Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building .NET applications using serverless technologies on AWS. This week we're going to dive into one of the most exciting libraries we've got coming up out of AWS and that is the Lambda Annotations Framework. So at the time of recording the Annotations Framework is still in preview and it should hopefully be GA in the near future. But what I'd really like to see is, is any feedback or any comments you have on this framework. So if there's anything you like or dislike, raise a GitHub issue, tweet me, send me a message on LinkedIn. I'd love to get some feedback about the actual framework itself. Now what the annotations framework is, it's a framework that allow, that simplifies the Lambda programming model and starts to get rid of a lot of the boilerplate code that might come from building applications on Lambda. Things like if you've got a Lambda function behind API Gateway, there's a lot of boilerplate that comes with that to map the API Gateway import into Lambda and then of course mapping it back. And you can end up with quite large Lambda functions with maybe two or three lines of code that are actually your business logic. So to get into that, we're gonna start from a brand new SAM application and look at how you can add the annotations framework. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a SAM init command in my terminal to actually generate a new SAM project. I'm gonna use a quick start. We'll just use the hello world example, <laughs> Python. <laughs> um, we'll use .NET 6. I will package my file as a zip. Um, I don't want to enable tracing and we'll call this annotations framework sample. This will just take a few seconds now while the template project gets cloned from the GitHub repository. Okay, that's finished cloning now, and I'm just gonna open up the project file in my IDE. So if I just navigate through there, and we'll open up this hello world, hello world.csproj. Awesome. And while I'm in the same folder, I'm actually gonna add a reference to my Lambda annotations package. So I'm gonna add .NET Amazon .lambda annotations, And of course, at the time of writing, because this is still preview, I just need to add the pre-release .NET add package, of course, can't just add anything. And this will actually add the Amazon Lambda annotations package to our project. So if I switch over to JetBrains now and I have a look at my Lambda function. So as a default, this is how a um, Lambda function that comes in from API Gateway looks. Of course, we've got our handler, but we've got all this kind of boilerplate code. So all, all that's really, the only bit of the code that's interesting really is this away get calling IP, but yet we've got maybe 15 lines of code around that 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 aren't really necessary for what we are doing. Like all this mapping of the API gateway response, do we really care how that happens? No. So let's have a look how we can add, use annotations framework to simplify this Lambda function. Okay, so let's have a look now how we can actually add this to our Lambda function. So all of the configuration with the annotations framework is attribute based, much like if you're building APIs using ASP.NET. So the first thing I can do is add this Lambda function attribute. And then of course, this is going to be fronted by an API and that API is going to have a get. And we want that just to be, uh, let's actually put that under the hello root. And that is as simple as it is to add the annotations framework to our project. So what does this actually mean in terms of our function code? Well, what I can actually do now is update my task to return the dictionary. And then actually my method, my function handler doesn't actually need any method parameters. And all I can do now is change that to look something like that. And I can get rid of all of this code at the bottom here. So you see now my function is entirely focused in on the, the business functionality. Now this is what Lambda was intended to be, these really specific blocks of business logic code and that is exactly what we have now. So how do we actually how do we actually use this now then? Well at the so behind the scenes this is using .NET source generators to automatically generate that boilerplate code at compile time. So when I build this project the actual output assembly will actually um, 
have additional methods around here. So if I go off and build my Hello World project now, this will um, complete successfully. And now we've got a compiled function. So the other really interesting thing that the annotations framework does is it actually generates some of the details for us that we might need to deploy this Lambda function, things like the handler and the configuration. So if I look at my, this template.yaml file now, we can see that this has been auto-generated by the annotations framework, and it's actually giving me the details of how I would then go off and configure this. So of course, at this point, I could just run a .NET Lambda deploy function, and it would use this template YAML. We could use this template YAML file to determine how that would look in AWS. But of course, I'm using AWS SAM. So all I'm going to do is use this auto-generated code and just grab a copy of that handler. And you'll notice that this handler isn't actually using the function handler that we've defined here, because that's just called function handler. Instead, we've got this function function handler generated um, class that's been auto-generated, and that has got its own function handler method. So when Lambda invokes our function, it will use this method that has been auto-generated by annotations framework. That auto-generated code will do all that boilerplate mapping and then pass that request on to our actual Lambda function, which is what we can see here. So I'm just going to grab a copy of this handler here, and then I'm going to flip over to Visual Studio Code, where I've got my SAM template itself opened up. Um, too much zoom. So you see the handler with when I've done salmon it, the handler is my actual function handler. So all I'm going to do is replace that with my generated function handler. And if I was to deploy this now, this would use that auto generated application code. And we have got this nice, simple business logic in here. The other really, really cool thing that Annotations Framework can do is actually manage dependency injection on our behalf. So let's say we wanted to put this get calling IP method in a separate, maybe we wanted to put it in a separate service. So if I go and create a new um, IP service, we've got a public IP service, and we've got on there, we've got a public um, task of type string for get calling IP. Um, and I'm actually going to copy over this HTTP client as well. And I'm just going to initialize that in the same way here. So now we've got this, we've got this service and we want to actually use this service now in our Lambda function. So how can we start to do dependency injection using the annotations framework? Well, we can do that in much the same way you do dependency injection in ASP.NET. So if I create a new startup class and I create and I add a single method to this startup class for public void configure services. Again, if you're used to ASP.NET, this will be very simple, very familiar, and I'm going to pass in my service collection. Just need to add the uh, reference to Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection to get my service collection, and then I can actually configure my Dependency Injection Framework in the same way I would in ASP.NET. Got configure services there and i've added a new instance a singleton and a new instance of my ip service so how can we actually use that in our lambda function now well we've got two options we can either you do it the the more traditional way and create a new instance of our function passing in an ip service um keep that lower cased um, oh, no, put, 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 oh, yeah. put the constructor in the right place james under the actual class there we are that makes more sense so we can configure it in the same way we would do dependency injection normally. So I just pass it in as part of my constructor, but we can also do it as part of our method signature. So what we've got is this from services attribute, and in there I can also say, pass in me an IP service. And then in here I can say IP service don't get calling IP. And there we are, we are now doing dependency injection in Lambda, all with the exact same setup that we would normally. The final thing we need to add is a attribute to our startup class, not to the method, to the startup class. And this now tells the annotations framework that this is a startup class and this needs to be done on 
startup. And that is all there is to the annotations framework. It really is that simple. It brings that attribute-based ASP.NET familiar programming model to Lambda and allows you to really focus in on your business logic and let Lambda worry about, um, let, let us worry about how to do that mapping of an API gateway request to your function. The intention um, is for this to support the other types of events that come into Lambda. Currently, at the time of recording, it only supports APIs. Now, a question I've had before is, obviously, this will return a 200 response based on the code I've got right now. Um, the code that gets generated will return a 200 response. Now, if I want to return something that isn't a 200 response, unfortunately, at the minute, we still need to return the API gateway proxy response, which then means that we need to then manually build um, our, we need to re-add this boilerplate for our response. And then in here, we can then specify a status code of say 500, for example. So currently, again, at the time of recording, if you need to return anything that's a non 200 status code, then you need to bring back a little bit of this boilerplate code to do that. So that's annotations framework. As I said at the start, if you've got any feedback, any opinions, any anything you'd like to see in the framework, please feel free to raise an issue on GitHub, tweet me, send me a message on LinkedIn, comment in the video below. All of the links for the framework are can be found in the description. And as always, if you liked this video, please like, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and please send me some feedback. I will see you all next time.